Hey everybody, it's Morgan Devon. Welcome back to the Work Smart Podcast. We are here for another edition of our Nashville Entrepreneur. I said Nashville, that's how you know I'm getting country. I'm in the South, y'all. <laughs> it's okay, we welcome you. Thank you. I'm here with Jasmine. She's an incredible woman, entrepreneur, nine to fiver, new mom, new Airbnb empire coming soon. Yay. <laughs> so we're going to get into it today. Um, first, let's just say, start with Jasmine, where are you from originally? So I am originally from Jackson, Tennessee, and I describe it as the only city between Memphis and Nashville. So. <laughs> That's right, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, you're in the desert <laughs> until you get to Memphis. <laughs> so stop in Jackson. I mean, you can stop at McDonald's and get back on the road. Yeah. So. <laughs> and how long have you been in Nashville? I've been in Nashville for six years, almost seven. So yeah, I feel like the time's flying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where's your hubby from? He's from Memphis. Girl, okay. born and raised. <laughs> Country. <laughs> uh, well, Memphis is way more the country, so yeah. we won't even go there. <laughs> this is not the Memphis series. This is the Nashville series. No, but he has one million relatives in Memphis. I so, bet. and then Memphis is home. I mean, I lived yeah. there for ten years, and Jackson's just basically a suburb of Memphis. It's only forty-five minutes away. Mm-hmm. So that's home for us. I mean, we stop in Jackson and see my mom on go the way on up. Memphis. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And what made you move to Nashville proper? So I actually never had Nashville on my radar. So Nashville kind of found me. And that's, mm. that was my motto after college is I'm going wherever God wants me to go. So mm-hmm. wherever I land. Mm-hmm. So I lived in D.C., lived in Louisville. Um, Alex and I have been together since we were 19 and 20 years old. Mm-hmm. Even though we were committed to each other, we were just like career focused. And both of us were like, we're going wherever our careers take us. Mm-hmm. And he was actually living in Clarksville. He was managing a territory for Kellogg's. Mm -hmm. And then I was finishing my MBA and graduated and was interviewing for jobs everywhere. Ended up getting a job at Meharry Medical College. Mm -hmm. And I decided to come to Nashville. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. it worked out. I mean, my dad was sick with congestive heart failure at the Mm -hmm. time. And he was back and forth to Vanderbilt. So Nashville was was the the home for that. And then... Alex and I just got engaged and I feel like it just, the seeds were planted and then everything else just flourished. But Nashville was not on my radar. Right. I grew up in Tennessee. I was like, I um, kind of want to go elsewhere, but I'll go wherever like I land. Yeah. But yeah. But. Living in Tennessee, mm-hmm. what was your perception of Nashville kind of growing up? Um, growing up in between both of the major cities, um, Memphis was the city that I could see myself in more so than Nashville. Mm -hmm. And that kind of flipped as an adult, which is Mm -hmm. interesting. Um, Because Nashville wasn't Nashville back then. It wasn't Nashville six, seven years ago. No, not when you you moved, for real. No, but like my dad would bring us to TSU's homecoming every year. So that was just part of our family ritual. We're going to TSU's homecoming. Then we're going to the Southern Heritage Classic Mm -hmm. down in Memphis, (laughs) where TSU plays Jackson State. Like that was just part of our like family dynamics. Mm So there were elements about Nashville that attracted me to it. But I just, by the time I got to high school, I was like, I want to go to University of Memphis. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I just, Nashville was not somewhere where I was like, oh, I want to go to Vanderbilt or TSU. I think when I started thinking about it from a college perspective, Maybe, yeah. it just didn't fit for me. Yeah. And then after college, because it wasn't the city that it is now, mm-hmm. it just didn't fit for me either. Mm-hmm. So, but then I landed here and I was just like, you know, I've turned water into wine elsewhere. Mm-hmm. And at this point, we're all mobile with the internet. So right. I don't care where I live. I can live in Bumble Hill, Mississippi and make it right. happen. Right, so, right. <laughs> so yeah. But So what do you like about living here now? I love that it is such a diverse city and people don't really know that. Do you think it's diverse? I think it's a diverse city in terms of creatives. I just, okay, yes, yes. I'll give you that In one. terms of creatives, <laughs> I do think it's diverse. I, it is, one, to me, it's a city that has so many young black professionals okay. with degrees and talents and all the above that the world doesn't, they don't give us credit for it. We're all here, even working at Meharry Medical College. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, that's the number one producer of black doctors and people with PhDs, DDS degrees, PA degrees. I mean, I'm talking about Nashville is pumping out career driven people. So I agree with you. I agree with you that there's a lot of people, black professionals who come through Nashville Mm -hmm. for school. Yeah, Not necessarily Vandy as much. You think they stay? They do. That's like, one of the things about um, that is one of the things that Meharry really pr- prides their 
um, their mission on is the mm-hmm. fact that the clinicians stay and mm-hmm. they serve underserved communities throughout Tennessee, which is rural communities. Yeah, totally. And a lot of people don't want to stay in rural communities. What right. they want to do is go back to the New York cities, or yeah. go to Boston or right. Miami or wherever. But yeah. I mean, black people own a lot of stuff here is mm-hmm. the thing people don't know about. And I think the black people who are in Nashville have also had to learn how to play the game. Yeah. So that's the, but that's the unfortunate the part of living in the South, though. Mm-hmm. Unless you're in Atlanta, you got to play the, the mm-hmm. you have to play the game. Mm-hmm. I don't want to call it their game, but we know what the game yeah, is. Yeah, politics. If yeah. Yeah. And so I think for black folks, it's like, well, I'm not going to tell anybody I own this restaurant because the minute I tell somebody I own this restaurant, then it's a black owned restaurant, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. No. But then white people might be like, oh, oh well, that's only for there. black people. And it's like, yeah. well, it's just a coffee shop. Yeah, you can, just, go. you can go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I did notice that there's some people on the low. I was like, that's owned. Yeah. Uh, like Eighth and Roast in yeah. cinema. I was like, uh, yeah. this mm-hmm. is black owned. I was like, hold up. This is black owned. Mm-hmm. 12 right. South and Emerson's and 12 South is owned by a black woman. Really? Yeah, she so. owns a couple of restaurants here. Yeah, I mean, the black people own stuff here, mm-hmm. and so it's not like Atlanta where everyone tells you. I was just, yeah, I was telling Alex yesterday. I was like, I mean, you can go to Candy's restaurant. Yeah, and Young every Jock celebrity and got it. Everybody got a restaurant, yeah. but it's just not like that here. Mm-mm. But I think it's because the white it's, celebrities have their restaurants, like Justin Timberlake. They do. And everybody, they have their stuff. But you will Yeah, I mean, yeah, they have their restaurants, but yeah, I just they're they're country music artists yeah. and. That's kind of part of their brand. Whereas these are just normal old black folks Mm -hmm. who have chosen to create an esteemed career for themselves so that they can afford to do things like that. Mm. And they're trying to hang on to it. Mm. And so they're like, okay, I'm not going to do anything to mess this up. up. Mm -hmm. So if I put my name on this, like people might think, oh, well, I can't go there anymore. Mm -hmm. So, Mm -hmm. you know. That's an interesting perspective. And one of the reasons I wanted to have you on this show is because Mm -hmm. I feel like you have more access to information than the average just like random black person here because mm-hmm. you're so well connected mm-hmm. um what other things do you think people need to know about the city because you've worked with like the tourism board and mm-hmm. different hotels and stuff yeah. what are the things that you would give like tips for people who are moving in like okay what else <laughs> do they need to know um for one you don't have to move outside the city per se to find somewhere decent to live we were I just talking about that we yeah. ever were like i mean my black realtor that mm-hmm. i went to college with mm-hmm. it met her when i was not 18 years old she sold me both of my homes mm. and i'm just like you, you don't have to move to um i don't know murfreesboro mm-hmm. or hendersonville mm-hmm. or gallatin i think that's the narrative that's being sold to young black professionals mm. and it's like you're a young black professional you're a doctor who just graduated yeah you got some student loans but you can pay two thousand dollar rent or you're going to get you a house with a mortgage with 17 1700 mm-hmm. mortgage mm-hmm. or you can move out to mount juliet Mm -hmm. or Gallatin and you're going to pay 1500 mortgage and then you're going to add on your gas then you're going to add on all your opportunity calls yeah the time in the car thinking about oh i can't go to this because it's an extra 20 minutes away yeah we might be having a drink that's another reason why you don't see the black people Mm. because it's being sold that they that we need to move out yeah and you no you Mm -hmm. don't have to move out like i've lived in it's a competitive process for buying houses right now tell us about it is so you you lived in east nashville Uh uh-huh i did and i did not bid on either one of my houses really Uh -uh. didn't bid on either one so I found the first one I was at work and doing something I shouldn't have been doing, looking for houses. <laughs> I wasn't serious. I was like, oh, let me go on Redfin. So I go on Redfin and I find this house and I was like, wait a minute, this can't be real. So I called Kir- Kirsten. She's my girlfriend from college. Uh-huh. I'm like, Kirsten, can you take me at Alex to see this house after work? So she was like, yeah, girl, I'll meet you over there. So we go over and she's like, oh, girl, this is my cousin's listing. We, I got you if you like it. So we go in, we tour it. There's four of them on the lot. So we toured all four of them. She was like, all right, pick one, which one you want. Wow. And so then she was like, okay, let me call Kena, her cousin, her mm-hmm. black cousin. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so she calls Kena and she says, Kena, my kid, my friends want this house. Kena's like, okay, give it to them. So they gave us the house. Yeah. All of our appliances were yeah. in the house and wow. everything. You bought it. They didn't give it to yeah. you. But yeah. Well, we bought it. It wasn't good. <laughs> well, in a market where you got a bid and in the crazy market. No, you're right. I'm just saying. Yeah. Just because, you know, people would be like, oh my God, you were given a house. No, like, I wasn't, wasn't given, like, given a house. house. No, no, no. We had to have our stuff together. <laughs> yeah. This is, yeah. Yeah. Long time coming. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I just don't want the narrative to be that there's no opportunities and no people, mm. no black people here because we're here. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. the city turns black. Um, for sure, for sure. 
a couple of times a year, I would say. One of those so. times, I'm waiting for them. Okay, University of Memphis had a game against UTK but that so got canceled to to in that game. day. Not necessarily, but that's when you see the city flip completely black. Okay, okay. I would say that. But I feel like there's other times when stuff is going on okay. all the time. So, yeah. I mean, You'll have to text me and be like, it's time. Yeah. We're outside. Yeah, we're outside. <laughs> Girl, I have a baby and we're still outside. So, I'm like... I mean, we were outside last weekend. We just went to this new, um, like, cocktail cabaret bar. Mm, yeah. Fun. Yeah, it's called Electric Jane's. And then I posted it on Instagram now. Electric yeah, Electric Jane's should have paid me. I'm like... That part. Yeah, I'm like, I should, I have, I should not have even gone here and posted y'all. At least a free drink. Yeah. But, well, you can't do yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, but. I think, too, there's just... We got to figure out another way for um, people to meet up all the time. Yeah. Versus... Well, that's, like, I think, what I'm missing is, like... Like in other cities, just kind of that city center mm -hmm. or those places where you're yeah. like, no matter what. And EG mm -hmm. Mac, like, you know, they're working on it. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I'm like, where are we supposed mm -hmm. to go when it's like you go out to dinner with your girl, you go out to dinner with your man, whatever. And then after dinner, mm -hmm. where do we go? Well, I think we can't like grab the entire black community and say that like, this is what needs to happen mm. because EG Mac, what are they, 30 somethings? Mid 30s, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's a whole nother audience. Yeah. And then you got your 20 somethings. And then yeah, my they husband, want to do another thing. Yeah, they do. My husband's little brother is in college at Belmont right mm -hmm. now. He's 22. Where do they go? And they're doing something completely different. Yeah. Hanging out on Demond Brian at the 3000 Club, which is black owned. Yeah. And, mm, that makes know, sense. Yeah. yeah. So they're doing a whole nother thing. So I think when we, we need options. Yeah, we got options, mm -hmm. but we're categorizing it as if, like, because you see Nashville and it's country music mm -hmm. um, heavily marketed, mm -hmm. we categorize it and say, there's no opportunities for black people in general there's mm. no black people here in general but there's pockets for every black person artsy black people my friend clarence mm -hmm. went to college Love with clarence. clarence clarence owns two art studios yeah here. yeah and um, i feel like with soho house he's about to blow yeah. up and we're both on the board for so mm -hmm. soho house mm -hmm. i know so many of these people right it's like if you grew up in jackson memphis nashville knoxville yeah and you were active in your community leaders yeah. or whatever yeah. we all know each other and maybe and, that's what i'm feeling maybe that's what the difference that's is, is like is. i'm not from here yeah. And I didn't go to college yeah. here. Yeah. So it's like, mm, versus yeah. other cities, you can kind of like walk in a random hotel and there's just black people there yeah. at the lobby. Uh -huh. You're not going to just walk in a hotel lobby and see it. No, the black people are probably there for a specific reason. Yeah, it's like there's some sort of meetup again, or some sort of thing. Of why they're not here. Like, mm. I mean, Alex's friend plays in the NFL. Mm -hmm. You won't see him and his just friends kicking it. just at the bar. Where are they at? I mean, they're traveling, they're everywhere. I mean, yeah. people, but also, again, it's like people are hanging out in their homes. It's yeah, I think people hang out in their homes a lot here. Yeah, Even yeah. the Titans I mean, players, I'm like, you're not going to see a random Titans player, know, like, no. walking mm -hmm. around. Yeah, but if other cities, you would be like, you yeah. would see them. But also, what is their motive in other cities? Since I've been on maternity leave. No, they're in the mix. <laughs> yeah, they want to be in the mix. But yeah, been, yeah. yeah, but then there's so many factors into these conversations that I want people to think about, so I'm glad you're asking yes, these please. questions. Because... I was watching um, WAGS um, because I've been on maternity leave mm -hmm. and I, I'm catching up on all these reality shows. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Real Housewives of Miami. <laughs> and I'm like, Lord, if they do Real Housewives of Nashville, make sure y'all make it a diverse situation yeah. so people don't assume that there are no assumed black people or brown folks in general here. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody's not in the country music industry. Right. Jill Scott lives here. Yeah. I mean, everybody has a home here. Yeah, that's true. That's another <laughs> thing I've noticed. A lot of people have beautiful homes here and you will know it mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. because they're out in franklin and brentwood yeah mm -hmm. and some of them are living in, in the city Hills. and condos mm -hmm. and yeah. all kinds of stuff so yeah. yeah yeah but um yeah i just was watching the show and i'm like i mean some of the some of the athletes are just hanging out because they're looking for certain things <laughs> <laughs> and so i think the nashville maybe isn't that approach yeah we're not there yet mm -hmm. and so i think people have to understand that it's a young city this mm -hmm. is not a new york where people have been going to the bar mm -hmm. looking for things mm -hmm. i was watching um <laughs> you're so, looking for things i was saying looking for things <laughs> but i was watching ozark and mm -hmm. um this guy was sitting at the bar and i was like i, I told alex i was like I don't think I've just gone to a bar and just sat there in a long right. time. I'm like, hey, y'all, come on over to the house. We got a bar at the house. Come to the house. Yeah, yeah come definitely. to the house. Yeah. Definitely. I don't know. I mean, and, and then, too, everyone has decent homes, so it's... 
that, know, I think that's another thing. In other cities, it's like, actually, don't come to my house. I have the, no yeah, space for you. I have a tiny here. apartment, mm-hmm. yeah. So I think all these factors play into, people keep categorizing the Nashville as like this scenario that does not offer what they're looking for when, mm. in other cities. It's not the same scenario. It just looks different. It, mm-hmm. it's, it has different vibes to it. Yeah. So, but you can create them. That's the fun part about it. So that's I mean, true. But when we go home to Memphis, that was one of the things about Memphis. It was like after college, you're kicking in with the locals. Right. I mean, okay. Mm-hmm. I think I'm done here. <laughs> like I love the locals. I mean, yeah. some of my my, my family Moving members. On. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like you're. We didn't feel like we were meeting anybody else mm. after that. We're not networking with anybody else yeah. after that. Yeah. And so you're I, not going to find that here. There's a lot of people coming in and out of the city. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so I think every city, but Memphis is still a fun city. Mm-hmm. There's still a lot to do. But when you talk about like, if you're going to go to Weston and Memphis and see the, um, the Grizzlies players, you're not, you're not. But also most cities are like that in Louisville. They don't have anybody sports teams. I mean, I was like, I had a condo on fourth street with a private rooftop when mm-hmm. I was living in Louisville and I was 23 years old. Right. I was like, Whoa, this is the life. And it's not like $900 a month. Right. Like, we were in Louisville, but yes. exactly. But <laughs> Louisville the is a city of a million people. Yeah. It's got a million plus people. Right. It's not a town. Right. And so when you think of certain cities in the United States, I think that we have to think about the dynamics in these cities. Yeah. And like, it's, that is a city. Yeah, San Francisco is less than a million people. Yeah. So I think that's that's one of the reasons I wanted to do this this series specifically yeah. was because I think that living on the coast, people who are on the coast just kind of blur the middle and the south together. Uh-huh. And it's like, well, actually, no, that's it's quite dynamic. Yeah, they all country. have their own personalities. Everybody has their own personalities. Yeah. So I want to switch into some questions around um, being a entrepreneur, Mm -hmm. blogger, influencer. You are a proud Mm -hmm. blogger. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's a perception that there's no more money in blogging, that Mm -hmm. people make money on Instagram, TikTok, Mm -hmm. um, YouTube. But Mm -hmm. what I know, what you know, is that people are making a lot of money on websites still. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your business, the types of products that you sell. Like, What is your Mm -hmm. highest revenue generating thing that you offer? So I, at this point, I haven't been doing, I used to do consulting. Mm. So I was doing a lot of consulting. Mm. I actually wrote eBooks and all that, but over the past, really? yeah, I posted I that. two sold out social media masterclasses, one in yeah. Nashville. And then I went to Atlanta, which I had no grounds in Atlanta and still sold out a social media masterclass. Wow. And so, um, because I have so many years of marketing experience mm-hmm. and specifically what well, was specific at the time in social media, yeah. that was kind of my niche. Mm-hmm. But then Social media sped up and it started changing. And and honestly, I think tech companies don't really even have control of like what it's going to look like anymore. It's just going. It's like they literally put the spin and top out there and it just started flowing. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of transitioned out of over the past year. I took my ebooks down Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't done any consulting over the past year. I've been focused on building other things like influencer stuff or getting into real estate and all that kind of stuff yeah but still also sharing that so that's my conglomerate Mm. of sharing and so i think that's why i'm able to get brand deals because companies are willing to work with me from a more lifestyle Mm -hmm. and business standpoint that's esteemed it's not like the marketing yeah 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 so that's interesting so you're saying in other words you were first making money teaching Mm -hmm. to some extent Mm -hmm. courses Mm -hmm. ebooks yeah and then but you weren't necessarily getting brand deals because like what kind of brand deals would you necessarily get brand deals too Uh, i do a hundred things at one time (laughs) (laughs) but yeah i just at the time if we're gonna like claim a product Mm -hmm. because i don't necessarily feel like brand deals you can claim as one product what's the type of product that you sell which is selling other people's products yeah yeah but um, so as far as like the product, I just feel like the industry changed. And mm. so you ha- kind of have to adapt with that too. So yeah, I just changed with it. I mean, mm-hmm. I might go back to doing some consulting mm-hmm. in a different light. Mm-hmm. Um, but then also you have to weigh, like we were talking about before this, like the revenue options. Yeah. Like what does this look like for you if you buy something at this price and what's the return on investment for it? Mm-hmm. And return on investment also encompasses your time. It's not just your money. Money. So mm-hmm. for me, I'm like, okay, I'm doing one-on-one sessions, yeah. taking an hour here and an hour there. And another thing with that is people don't want to work. So <laughs> I'm just going to get real. But I agree with you. People are very interested in working less and getting paid more. They are. But and so isn't for that me, life? 
And for me, on the ethical <laughs> side of it, I was like, I just can't continue to do this. So that was also another factor. Yeah. Because I'm like, I'm teaching you for an hour and then you're coming back with the same questions that I actually taught you. Mm. And then you're not doing anything. And then you're asking me, well, how is it that you were able to do X, Y, and Z? And I'm like, well, probably because I got up and I did X, Y, and Z. Right. And so now I have one, two, three in the bank. For years. Yeah. Yeah. And the years of doing it Mm -hmm. too. But I don't think they realize that. And then I would like, I'd sell the eBooks and then it's like, well, I still want to ask you more questions. Yeah. And so when you do that, you open yourself up for free dialogue. Mm -hmm. And then if you don't do the free dialogue, Mm -hmm. then you you might as well be a negative whatever on the Better Business Bureau because then people feel some type way I that you the didn't same. give them yeah yeah and so for me I just felt like it just was not going in the direction that I wanted it to go mm-hmm. in and so I mean I've I put my time elsewhere I managed a Grammy award winning artist mm-hmm. I did his social media and marketing mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. also I mean how I got my start in marketing was doing my sister's social media and marketing mm-hmm. and now mm-hmm. she's a Grammy nominated artist mm-hmm. so I mean I think you can figure out, you just have to pick one thing mm. and figure out how to manifest it from there. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was... And know when to move on. I mean, I think when that's the thing. On. Sometimes people just hold on to this vision of, well, I'm going to make this amount of money, but I'm going to do this. And I'm like, let's mm-hmm. be flexible. Let's be mm-hmm. fluid because the world changes, the market changes, mm-hmm. and you learn new things. Yeah. And then too, everybody started coming out with eBooks. Yes. And yes. And everyone started coming out with marketing courses and yep. promising certain things. Mm-hmm. And me as a marketing professional, I know that I can't promise you These certain outcomes. things. Yes. Right. So my ethics wouldn't even allow me to participate in the industry to that capacity yeah. anymore. Because unless I can get down in the stand with you yeah. and like you actually do the work mm-hmm. so we can get the volleyball over the net, mm-hmm. then I can't do this. Yeah. The ebook is you. risky because people are like, well, I have the instructions. Why didn't I? Why didn't it work for me? Yeah. It's like, well. Well, no. You yeah, actually have to more. apply it. Yeah. yeah. And then, too, there's going to be other factors. What is your business? Mm-hmm. And what is your business up mm-hmm. against? Are you on a coffee shop? Right. Are you an artist? Right. Like, which um, genre are you focusing on? Right. Because genres are also a conversation now. I mean, even when I'm doing work for iHeart, I have to decide who which genre gets this. But maybe an artist doesn't fit into a genre. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, her is fitting into everybody's category. She's R&B, she's right. gospel, she's right. pop. She's, I mean, right. she's fitting into all these categories. And so I have to make that decision as a marketer. Who does this go to? So I'm looking at the audiences on the backside of all of this and other factors too, in demographics locally and all and uh, geographically and all of that mm-hmm. to decide where all this is going. So when I'm trying to teach you in an ebook these things, I can't too many even variables. yeah, I can't even give it all to you. Yeah, it's too many variables. Yeah. And I think that's really true. It's like and I know people listening to this are like, damn, I was gonna make an ebook because I'm trying to scale my stuff and not have to talk to everybody individually. And mm-hmm. I think you make a good point, mm-hmm. which is that if you're gonna write an ebook or you're gonna do a product, it has to be so specific. And mm-hmm. you have to actually disqualify people up front. Like, if you're doing this, this is not for this, 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 this. It is not mm-hmm. for people who want this outcome, this outcome. This is only for mm-hmm. these types of people, or else the ebook is gonna fall flat mm-hmm. and you're gonna get a lot of complaints, refund requests, and mm-hmm. it's just a whole nightmare. Yeah, and we see it all the time with mm-hmm. like with um entrepreneurs that are going that route. Yeah. But we see also, their comments. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then also a lot of these entrepreneurs don't have the expertise to back it up. So well, I didn't that's have a story for another day. Me. It is a story <laughs> for another, from another day. Um, and I see that quote all the time. That's like, if you don't do it, then somebody else will. Well, hell, let somebody else do it because <laughs> I, I'm about to be out here feeling bad about myself yeah. because I put out information that I didn't know what I was talking about. Right. I'm just not interested in doing that. Yeah. So if yeah. I can't be me and I can't give you valid advice to help you mm-hmm. and get in the trenches with you, it's then not I'm not. Me. Yeah, and not, it's not for me. It's not. It's more than the money for me. Yeah. It's like my my own humility is at stake, and yeah. I just don't want to go to sleep at night feeling like. I sold somebody, I sold my soul first and foremost. Mm-hmm. And then I gave somebody something that is just not going to help help them if they're not willing to work. Yeah. So I don't know what it is. Maybe they need an empowerment conference before they come see me. Because if you don't. Don't send them to work smart. Uh-uh. <laughs> no, they can stay over there. Work smart. I make people work Listen, in the program. What? Period. Yeah. I'm like, nothing about me never worked. No. And I think that's a common misconception. <laughs> I actually was just featured in Style Blueprint's uh-huh. um, Faces series. And they were like, what's a common misconception? or like what is it that people why do people follow you I said because I don't 
I don't make it not real. Yeah, I'm you don't not an entrepreneur it. that's out here talking about quit your job. Right. Like, You're like I have a job. <laughs> yes. And I like to also make a lot of money on the side. Yes. I like making money <laughs> really at both places. You really have two jobs. Yeah. Frankly. And like, and I'm not gonna sit on here and tell you how much I make for mm -hmm. you to like me. Yeah. I'm uh, not gonna do it. I'm, I just hit a million dollars. I'm and like, okay, but how much did that? you spend to get to your million dollars? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Because you probably went and bought Chanel bags every yeah. week to post. No, I'm saying or, to spend on to get the revenue. Like people are like, oh, I, my course did a million dollars in sales. And I'm like, cool, but you spent $600,000 on ads right. to buy your but not sales. Just that, but social media wants you to, in a sense, which mm -hmm. I think we have to address, mm. it wants people to showcase these things so that they can get the attention. Yeah, and it's sure. like, those are investments too. It's like yeah. you're buying designer purses and things that, yeah. to get to get a certain Well, problem. it always kills me actually when people buy them. I'm like, you know you can rent them, right? Like yeah. if you're really just stunting, yeah. you don't have to actually buy it. What is that? I cannot remember the show, but there was this show that came, was it on Netflix? Netflix, what? Um, where the, the Instagram guy was, thing? Yeah. And um, the guy was like renting the plane. The, oh, there was one on HBO and then there was not one on Netflix yeah, as well. Yeah, and he was like renting the plane. And so I'm like, listen, I'll sit back here in the economy all night. Like, yeah, they rent the PJ. <laughs> yeah. Or they just, like, it's, a, it's a mess. Living in LA, you learn like, Oh, nothing is real. So Tamika was, she was just saying, I probably made Nashville seem no. kind of crazy. And I was like, well, I mean, if you, because for creators. And I was like, well, if you go to another city, it also has this aspect mm -hmm. of crazy. Mm -hmm. So Atlanta. you saying that about what? LA, my yeah. cousin's in LA. She's uh -huh. an influencer and she's like, girl, mm -hmm. like it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother wild animal out here. It is. So I think every city is different, but if you know who you are, mm -hmm. like I don't sing country music. And I never came to Nashville with that aspect. I, I do like country music, mm -hmm. but I never came here and tried to like change myself in no shape, form, or fashion. Right. And so I think I just, I just came here and I was like, this is what you get. This is where I came from. Mm -hmm. This is who I am. This is what I'm going to do. And if, anywhere where I can't be me, I'm just, I'm just not interested in being there. Yeah, so, I yeah. agree with you. So when you transition into being a mom, mm -hmm. did you plan out your mom influencer brand deals like how does that process no, I, I always didn't. wonder I'm like do people tell people like oh I'm pregnant you email all the brands I and think then some they're people like do. I think some people plan the whole charade really from, yeah even like trying to get pregnant and plan. some people plan the whole charade I mean it's social media it's like it just if we're being honest so you're about, like I'm pregnant and then all the brands were like hey well, for me, I'm a lifestyle blogger, so whatever's happening mm. in my life is what I'm going to share. Mm. And then there's a limit on it. So okay. there's a filter. I'm not giving it all. Right. Again, I'm not going to sell my soul. Mm -hmm. So I actually got pregnant. We were trying for like four months, mm -hmm. and um, I actually- That's not long. No, it's not long at all. I Shooting actually, it up. <laughs> girl, <laughs> I went to the doctor, and she was like, well, it's been four months. You you want to try an ovulation kit? I was like, no, I'm no, good. No, yeah, that is not that much. No, yeah. I was like, if I get pregnant, I get pregnant. Yeah. If I don't, then I don't. Yeah. So I've just I've been that way. Like I said, back to where I wanted to live after college. I'm like wherever, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. And then when it came to motherhood, I was like wherever, mm -hmm. whenever. Mm -hmm. So then I go to Houston to take care of my niece, who mm -hmm. my sister, my brother-in-law had COVID. I come back and I find out I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I sat there for a minute by myself and I did not tell Alex for a week. Really? Uh, a week? Uh, wow. I didn't tell him for a week. I was walking around the house like. Mm. <laughs> I mean, not that I didn't want to be a mother. I yeah. wanted to be a mother. I just was shook. Yeah, like, well, it's a big taking, moment. It's a, yeah, it's a huge moment. It's taking on a whole human. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And then when you have all these aspirations for your human, yeah, because it's no longer me just doing this. It's mm -hmm. like I'm doing this for her, yes. and then she's got to do it for her too eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, so I told him in the club. I told him that weekend. Stop it. Was I he did. like, you want to drink, baby? And you were like, what? <laughs> <laughs> we missed dinner reservations three times. And because I was, I was like, by Friday, I was starting to feel sick. Okay. So I was like, I'm going to tell him. Yeah. And so then we missed dinner reservations three times. We went out to eat, long story short. And I just handed him the pregnancy test and I put it in a bag. Yeah. And I had a sweater from when he was born. It says Alex on it. His Aww. mom gave it to me a while ago. Aww. And so he pulls it out and he starts waving the pregnancy test around in the club. Oh my God. 
gosh. And I was like, will you please stop? I'm going to throw up. And then everybody up in here looking at us. I'm like, please stop it, sir. So that's how you found out. And then honestly, we didn't tell anybody. Mm. We didn't tell anybody until I was 17 weeks long. Oh, wow. That's a long so time. I found out at eight weeks. And yeah, I just feel yeah. like, too, that's another point I mm-hmm. want to make with social media. You got time. Mm -hmm. You can do social media on your own time. Delay it, too. That's the other thing. So Mm -hmm. when I went to Costa Rica, I delayed it by a week Mm -hmm. because I didn't want people to... So basically, you know, you make all the content. You have real life decisions. Yeah. And you don't want to be... For me, I didn't want my security, privacy locations. People will Mm -hmm. zoom in on little things and be like, oh, you're at this random spot. Are you still Mm -hmm. there? And I'm like, actually, I'm not there anymore. No. You uh know? But then also, you might have business things that you have going on that you don't need to put this on. People don't need to know that I'm actually taking this board meeting over here in Costa Rica. Uh, I have have my coworkers all the time. They're like, girl, how do you do it all? Um, Well, I probably did it like three weeks ago. That part. Yeah. (laughs) So it's not like I'm like, I'm sitting here and I just post and something right. and they're like hi what what, what yeah what? this is gonna come out weeks from now yeah you know so it's like you don't have to be on this linear schedule mm-hmm. on everybody else's schedule when it mm-hmm. comes to social media mm-hmm. i mean i didn't even post my baby shower stuff until prop i had rain by the time i posted my baby shower stuff the baby shower was in <laughs> september seriously the baby shower didn't get posted until uh january oh my god so like i don't know i mean i've always been like i'll, I'll get around to it and then with yeah. special moments Mm -hmm. I just was not willing to um, also sell her. Mm -hmm. Like I had a couple, I had a brand recently ask me if they could, if she could be in the campaign. And I was like, no, Mm -hmm. she's three weeks old. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, they're like, well, you can just show the back of her head or something like that. Uh It's like, it's a night for me. No, I'm not going to do that. How did you decide about that boundary? Like in terms of, are you going to show her? Mm-hmm. everything at some point are you going to create her own does she have her own page already she does she is does it have her own page it is public okay yeah. how'd you make that decision alex and i were just like let's go ahead and find her name uh-huh. so it wasn't like a big business decision it was like let's go ahead and find her name and like yeah. just grab it for her yeah mm-hmm. for her and so um that's what we did but it wasn't we didn't sit down and strategize on like what this looks like for her mm-hmm. like she might want no parts to do with it mm-hmm. one day and if she doesn't, then, hey, we'll have that conversation, delete, yeah. and go on. Yeah. She's just such a sweet, kind soul. I mean, I know she was sent here from the ancestors. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. She's an old soul. She, I can't even describe it. I mean, my dad told me she was a girl, my late dad. Mm-hmm. And I had a daydream, and he came to me, and all the ancestors were there. My granddad, all the dead folks, mm-hmm. which is crazy. <laughs> And so then um, she ended up being a girl. Mm. And then she has like hazelish, like mm. blue eyes. And my granddad had hazelish blue mm. eyes. And she's got this fluffy, curly hair. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, she ain't getting for me because, <laughs> <laughs> baby, these girls are tight. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, but my granddad had like curly hair. And she, it's just interesting to see a little person mm-hmm. reach back and grab genetics. Just. Yeah, and then here she is. So I'm curious to see who she'll be like. And we actually named her Opal, Rain Mm -hmm. Opal. Mm. Opal was my dad's mom. And I never met her, but my daddy used to tell me, you act just like Johnny May. Her, <laughs> her um, nickname was Johnny May. You know everybody black got a nickname. Facts. So, <laughs> and a first and last middle name. So I didn't even know her name was Opal yeah. until I got pregnant. You're I was like, talking yeah. to my aunt and my aunt was like, um, yeah, you know, your grandmother's real name is Opal. It's I not Johnny no May. no idea. So I named her Opal because my daddy told me she was a girl and here she is. So whatever her personality is Mm -hmm. and whatever she wants to do with the future, we're just laying the blueprint for her. So that I want her to work. She can't come out here talking about she don't want to work and she want to get an e-book. She can't do it. (laughs) You're going to give her a car one day? Oh yeah, she's going to get a car. Look, um, her Airbnb is already up and uh, running. Did you put it in her name? No, it's not in her name. Okay. No. You know, some people are doing that. They're like buying real estate and putting it in their, in their children's, children's name. Names. No. Uh-uh. Yeah. I'm like, we'll that handle is... that business when she's 18. Yeah. Like, no. I mean, she I'm... needs to be a kid. Yeah. yeah. But she will be a blessed child, mm-hmm. um, but she won't be a broken child to that respect. Mm-hmm. I just don't. I mean, I don't want her to have to struggle for anything. Like, mm-hmm. I, she, but she, I want her to work. Yeah. I want her to take pride in her work. So yeah. if whatever she wants to do, I don't want her to feel stressed about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I aspire. 
Uh, I aspire. <laughs> we're not there yet. <laughs> I know. I'm like, but we're making a way though. Oh, and yeah. I think our generation are game changers in that respect. Definitely. So Alex and I have been together 13 years. Mm-hmm. When you ask about planning for a kid, mm-hmm. we did not even remotely try mm-hmm. until you the, felt yeah. secure. Yeah. Because yeah. we didn't want to have that responsibility. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I mean, but in parenthood for us looks different. It's chill. Like yeah. I've never been more free in my life. You're so much on to leave. Yeah. How long are you, were you taking? Or are you taking? I wanted to take a full three months with her. Yeah. So, yeah. And I've still been working here and there. So, right. yeah. Yep. But. And are you ready to go back to work? Um, Sometimes. Um, And then sometimes I'm like, I don't want to be a full-time mom. My mom was a housewife. Mm-hmm. And I think it was such a blessing for us to have her around. She mm-hmm. actually worked up until she had me on the youngest of five. Mm. And then she, Oof. yeah. And then she decided she wanted to do the housewife thing, which is not my thing. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know what work looks like. I'm ready to transition with whatever. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll definitely, I still have aspirations to rule corporate America and rule yeah. entrepreneur life. Yeah. So, yeah. And I don't know what that looks like. Those but, things take time. Mm-hmm. Um, five kids. I'm yeah. still on that. Yeah. Five I just am like, five kids and working? Yeah. Bruh. But I think it was different <laughs> back then, though. Again, I think it's just like, it was way different. People were yeah. more willing to help. Yeah, people had a lot of family around. Oh, yeah. And Alex and I are here by ourselves. Yeah, And I'm so tough. proud of both of us because yeah. we've been killing it just by ourselves. So I found a nanny um, on Care.com yes. to help out here and there. Oh, you did it on Care.com. <laughs> yeah. That's good. Yeah, yeah. I like Care.com. Mm-hmm. Um, last time we spoke was at the 2190 brunch. Uh-huh. And I challenged you to get a personal assistant, VA, EA. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're starting with the nanny. Uh-huh. What's the next hire? I don't know. I want an assistant, but the things that I've been able to accomplish on my own mm-hmm. are what are what make me have a hard time trusting somebody. Again, like when we mm-hmm. talk about people who are willing to work, yes, I don't want to have to work work for you. Mm-hmm. Like I don't want to have to work to work you out. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's true. that is really really good point because sometimes it takes more work to onboard somebody train them uh-huh. and then if it doesn't work out you're like i just spent all this time and investment on and this then too for what i need them to do i feel like they need to definitely have some education and background to do it mm. and so it's do you not... want them to work on your personal life or on your business personal stuff or okay. business stuff but okay. yeah it would be my lifestyle my branding and blog and all yeah. that so they need to do that mm-hmm. but again there's even ways that i will frame stuff like I've, I've interviewed a couple of management companies, not just for an assistant, but mm-hmm. just management companies yeah, to manage right. me. Yeah. And That's I just, talent. Yeah. Right. But, but they don't have the talent that I'm looking for. And probably because I do this for a living in corporate America. I think that's it. You have a unique core mm-hmm. competency in actually yeah. doing your own work for yourself. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when I'm asking them X, Y, and Z and they can't give me an answer, I'm just like, yeah, absolutely not. Yeah. Because what I do is I'll sift through this contract mm-hmm. and I'll highlight X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. And then if I see something and I leave my notes on it mm-hmm. and they come back and say, well, we can offer you X amount, well, that ain't gonna work for me. Mm-hmm. So this is what I need. Mm-hmm. And this is what the industry rate's going for. Mm-hmm. I'll evaluate um, everything that they have going on in their business. Mm-hmm. I told a brand once, they told me that I wasn't worth um, the amount of money I was asking for. And I said, well, uh, according to you, your engagement rate is 0.0009%. Because <laughs> I have the tools to look it yes. up. Yes. And, and they're not going to get that from the average person. Nope. Yeah. The average person is just going to say, oh, I'm not yeah. worthy. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. Okay, I'll do it for this rate. Uh-uh. I'm worthy. Yeah, yeah. And actually, whoever is running your marketing probably needs a course and some stats. Mm-hmm. They need a course in some analytics. Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. also need to take a creative course. Mm-hmm. And they also need to take some sort of business course to figure out pricing strategies. Yeah. Like all these things. And so when I'm thinking about what I want in an assistant, I know, I can't find, I haven't, I have not found anybody that's willing to go the extra mile for me yeah. in that way. Because yeah. I took a contract from, uh, it was like a five figure contract mm-hmm. all the way up to like a seven figure contract. Mm-hmm. But I did that on my own accord. Mm -hmm. And I also want to say the assistant thing seems like a glamorous thing for a lot of people, for entrepreneurs, because entrepreneurship is like a glamorous conversation now. And then it's like, well, let me call my assistant. Well, that's the glamorous conversation. Well, I don't need an assistant. I recently had a conversation with somebody. Mm -hmm. I probably need an assistant. I'm not saying it in that way. (laughs) But I'm saying like having an assistant is almost like, 
that one commercial where it said, well, let me have my people call your people. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, well, now I'm sitting right here. Can we just do this right now? Yeah. yeah. And let's yeah. discuss this business deal right now. Let's go right. through it. Yeah. And so. Yeah, and assistant is not an excuse to not do your own work. No, but then you had all these management companies pop up too that also don't have the expertise. I was going to ask you, would you ever consider having a management company? A man for to me other, to manage people? Yeah, for you to. I have thought about it because I do read other influencers' contracts. They send me their stuff. I imagine like, they do. Yeah, all the time. I mean, I, and, and I as neg- you get bigger, there's going to be brand deals where you're like, I'm not the right fit for this. This isn't the right mm-hmm. price point for me, but she is and she is. Yeah. So I have thought about it, but again, right now, it seems like the um, the revenue and the time that goes into it yeah. is just not worth it for me right now. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, it's tough because there's only percent, so yeah. you're not really making the full. Uh-uh. It's a lot. It's a lot of work. It is a lot of work for me to do all that. And again, like I'm doing the work of like a lawyer and everything right mm-hmm. now because mm-hmm. my brain thinks like that. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. the average you person. You don't have a lawyer that you said your contracts so you're doing. No, no, you're no. I do yourself. myself. Yeah. Yeah. But then also, if I send it to a lawyer, I mean, they have to be specific to this industry, which is also it's tough. Yeah, because you don't have lawyers that know social media in the way that it needs to be deciphered. And so it's like, when you think about it, yeah, I can go hire any old Joe Smo that has a law degree, but if he's a property boundaries lawyer, yeah. he can't read through this contract the way that I do. Right. So again, it goes back to that conversation of entrepreneurs thinking, oh, let me call my assistant. Oh, let me call my lawyer. Right. Honey, your lawyer might not know this industry no. in the way that they need to know it. And it's moving fast. So you mm-hmm. need someone who sees, okay, oh, they're, they want to be able to do market and advertise against my face mm-hmm. and yeah. run ads against me. Oh, mm-hmm. I didn't catch that. It's almost all like little when things. Mark Zuckerberg went to go talk to Congress mm-hmm. and Congress is all 70, 80 years old. It's like... <laughs> it was so bad. Yeah. But they're like, are, but how does Facebook make money? And he was like, Congress been ads. Yeah. Facebook make money and from like, ads. What's an ad? Like, you mean the billboard? You You're mean selling the, the data. You're selling the, everyone's no. data. Exactly. But they, they're like a data. You mean like the dates on the calendar? Yeah. yeah and it so was it's bad. like, it was again, bad. it's like t- these titles and the jobs that we're asking people to do, yeah. they have to be more specific now. They yeah. have to be fitted to what we need. And if it ain't fitted to what you need, then mm-hmm. no. I mean, Alice and I were interviewing a nanny and she didn't want to be vaccinated. And oh, he was like, I want my baby. Yeah. And so she, she said for her health reasons. And Alex was like, well, no. Well, I, you know, we are in Tennessee. I'm sure there are plenty of households that are like, vaccination, that's fine. No, that we'll let a nanny be in there without a vaccination. Oh, I'm sure. But again, when it comes to your business, when yeah. it comes to anything that you have going on, you have to just draw the line. If you don't check the box, it's when you're serious no. about it, it's just a no. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. just a no. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, okay. And that's hard because it's scarce. Mm. It's scarce out here mm-hmm. for good people. Mm-hmm. Yes, especially in a city that's growing really quickly. Yeah. And there's a lot of money coming in. Yeah. Um, all right. So just wrapping up. So in terms of advice for a new entrepreneur who said, all right, I'm moving to Nashville. How do they get connected? What would you say? Like, these are the things you should do so that you can find the circles and start to get to know the city and the community here. I would say be prepared to just get out and have conversations at whatever events you can find. Like mm-hmm. join um, Urban Leagues, if that's what yes, Urban League Urban League is big here. Yeah, mm-hmm. join Urban Leagues. I mean, are you in a sorority or fraternity? Mm-hmm. Get out and meet some of those people. Everywhere we go, mm-hmm. we got people around us willing to help. Mm-hmm. I mean, just go in and talk to business owners. I remember when I first moved here, um, my best friend and I actually went to the National Museum of African American Music's um, mm-hmm. Black Music Honors. Mm-hmm. They did their first one here in mm-hmm. Nashville. Mm-hmm. And they had a red carpet and I was doing some freelance writing for Huffington Post. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I'm going to this red carpet. And Lauren had her camera and it was just <laughs> me and Lauren and yeah. we did the red carpet. So and cute. That video still has like the most views that I've ever gotten on YouTube. Yeah. And I didn't know what in the world I was doing. Yeah. I mean, I had a concept of what I was doing, but. Yeah, you're just going with the flow. Yeah, just yeah. go out there. And I was freelance writing for Huffington. It's mm-hmm. not like I was like a journalist on assignment for mm-hmm. Huffington. So mm-hmm. I think Nashville is one of those cities where you can make a way out of no way. I mm-hmm. have made a way out of no way. I used to get up and do photo shoots at four and five o'clock in the morning. My photographer was in Murfreesboro. Wow. So I drive out to her, wow. come back to Nashville, get dressed Your and go work to work. Your work ethic is Mahiri. incredible. Like, well, thank you. I just, yeah. I feel like no one's ever like done 
the work that I do in mm-hmm. the way that I do mm-hmm. it. And so I'm just like, I have to do it or it's just not going to get done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. in which I know that's a, that's a tragic flaw of mine too. <laughs> it's I, okay. I, we're going to work on that. We're working on it. But yeah, I mean, if you're an entrepreneur here, find other entrepreneurs. There's yeah. an entrepreneur center here. Mm. Um, you can get plugged in there. Mm-hmm. But also I think don't be afraid to just reach out to people on social media. Yeah, everyone's now. friendly here. You yeah. can DM everybody Yeah, and people will respond. Absolutely. I, th- I mean, most people are running their own social media because you mm-hmm. can't find nobody that actually <laughs> can knows do what right. they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there's so many ways to meet people here. And it's just you got to get out there and have confidence in yourself and what you want to do. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Clarence moved back from he's from Nashville, mm-hmm. but he moved back from New York mm-hmm. and came in and opened up two art studios. Mm-hmm. And he's popping. Yeah, he's yeah. popping. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, all of us that know him are here to support him. Absolutely. But even still, like there's still there's still a way for you to come out and get connected here. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and create your own stuff. Come here, do a brunch. Like I think that's the key. Yeah. Just like don't be shy. Just mm-hmm. make a thing, post it on Instagram, tag a couple people, and, and call just it a night. And keep going. Yeah. Keep building. Jasmine, thank you so much for coming in today to share with us all the things about Nashville. I appreciate your honesty, your transparency. Um, I look forward to building with you here. Yeah, me city. too. I know this is our like third time together. Yeah. So I'm glad we're ramping we're... up, sis. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Absolutely. All right, y'all. We'll catch you at the next episode of Work Smart. Make sure you are subscribing, following, wherever you're watching this. Click that button. All right. Catch y'all later.